administration. We govern you only on your behalf, but never rule over you. We shall consult and dialogue, but never dictate. We shall reach out to all, but never put down a single person for own views contrary to our own. As your president, I shall serve you with prejudice towards none, but compassion and amity towards all. Today, permit me to outline in broad terms a few initiatives that divide our concept of progressive good governance and furtherance of the Nigerian idea. We shall remodel our economy to bring our growth and develop the GDP much better, achieve the GDP much better than we have today. I assure you, unfair subsidy. Unfortunately, the budget that I've glimpsed before I assume office and what I've had is that no provision is there for fair subsidy. So fair subsidy is gone. The central bank must work towards a unified exchange rate. Absolutely. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for staying with us. Now, most Nigerians suffering from adverse economic hardship Poverty, insecurity, and poor living standards view this new era as a ray of hope and an opportunity to start afresh. As Tinubu and Shetima assume office, they must recognize the enormity of the weight of the hopes of millions they are carrying. It is now time to put behind us whatever views, um, disenfranchisement, or even um, praise that we have for the Buhari era and build on whatever successes he achieved while fixing the, um, the areas where he failed, um, mindful of the fact that no leader is infallible. In his speech, the newly sworn in president mentioned that he would govern and not rule, serve with prejudice towards none but compassion towards all. He outlined the principles that will guide his administration and promised to increase the GDP through job creation, food security, and, and um, an end to extreme poverty. Now, adding that women and youth will feature prominently in the administration, he said that the 2023 um, budget made no provision for fuel subsidy, and more so, subsidy payment is no longer um, justifiable, and fuel subsidy is gone. Now, he concluded his speech by adding that the central bank must work towards a unified exchange rate. Um, so today we are analyzing this um, new era, the Tinubu Shatima era. Uh, what, will, what do you think the challenges will be and what are your expectations? All right? Um, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 8 one 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So quickly, let me hear your thoughts because I want to bring in Kunle Lawal in a minute. What do you think? What are your expectations? What do you think the challenges would be? Immediate one is this first as subsidy yeah. because there's a lot of drama happening. Mm -hmm. I was talking with my sister. They said, why didn't these people just let us take out subsidy 10 years ago? 
now we're coming back to the same circle. It's full circle and it's the same drama. It's happening all over again, right? Do you think it's something that can be sustained? It's almost like a hit, you know, at the beginning of the election, um, the era. What do you think? Well, I think, well, if we, if we truly want change, sometimes we need to make the tough decisions. And um, tough decisions means that everybody must... Um, we all agree. I mean, so, again, I also think that misinformation, misunderstanding, when people do not understand. So I think one of the things that this new administration needs to do is to quickly sensitize Absolutely. the people. Communicate. Uh, communicate. That's very key mm -hmm. because when people know what to expect, then they know how to manage themselves or, you know, position themselves mm -hmm. in such a way that, you know, the blow is not too terrible. But, I mean, what is, it's like ripping the bandage off a wound. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary. Absolutely. Let me come to you, Unoma, quickly. Your thoughts, and then I'll bring in Konela Wao. Yes, I, I agree with you all. It's, um, it, there's certain measures that need to be taken and uh, taken very quickly to help the economy. I think uh, for, for, the, uh, for the new president, there's a lot of unif uh, opportunity to unify the nation. And um, I like the fact that you brought in communication. Communication is very key to helping people to understand what your plans are and to direct them in the, in, uh, towards the, 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 what you want to be able to accomplish. So. For me, I think another very important aspect that might be important to consider, because I didn't hear it in the course of the speech, is the aspect of the debt crisis. You know, we already are owing to the tune of over, I think, a hundred billion or so dollars. Okay. And um, these uh, crises is also something that we need to pay attention to. The um, area of um, insecurity, the aspects of uh, communal conflict, ethnicity, um, divisions amongst people. Already, a lot of citizens have um, uh, their concerns about the new administration as to how um, things are going to flow coming from the back, back of the way elections were carried out in the country. So I think there's a lot of um, trust that would need to be built trust with Nigerian deficit, citizens. Yeah. And Absolutely. The direction that they want to take is very key as well. Absolutely. So Kulila Wal is an entrepreneur, idea generator, TEDx speaker, and a patriot. Um, he has a keen eye for opportunities based on his experience in politics, working with non-governmental um, organizations and the federal government. He's very passionate about Nigeria and is what could be termed as a detribalized Nigerian. Now, he considers his boundaries to be limitless and is really focused on changing the Nigerian narrative in political participation and currently serves as the executive director of Electoral College Nigeria and is also the country lead for World Chat um, Nigeria. Kunle was once an acting national publicity secretary of Koa Party, Alliance for New Nigeria Secretarial Candidate at 2019 and has since transitioned to a non-partisan influential player in politics and the electoral matters as regards Nigeria. And he's joined us live from Abuja. Thank you so much, Kunle, for joining us this evening. Kunle Lawal, are you there? Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. Now you're looking very, yeah, very in you your regalia. <laughs> very abuja <-ish. laughs> Hi, Kule. All right, so I mean, let's quickly just jump into this conversation because sometimes when we start this conversation, we think we have time until yeah. we start to talk, right? I mean, you've heard Diola, you've heard Norma. I mean, what Norma raised, the debt issue, that's a big issue, issue about insecurity. Um, so we're looking at challenges and expectations, right? There are current challenges right now. This immediate subsidy issue that um, the president has announced that, you know, the end of subsidy is not, is not part of the provision, then the amount of debt that is like tied neck deep on the Nigerian, uh, what's it called, the shoulders, that the burden of our debt and all of that. What do you think, first of all, in your own summation, what do you think would be like the immediate concerns for this government in terms of like challenges? And are we going to see the same old thing that, oh, no, it was the previous government? Because this time around, 
is the same party transitioning into another same party. Because what we've seen in the past is blame game. Are we going to have those kinds of issues with this new transitioning, with this new era? Or is it going to be just, you know what, let's just take on the bull by the horn and just work with what we've got? Kule, are you there? Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, I'm here. Okay, okay. So, um, first and foremost, I'd like to congratulate Nigeria on its first um, seventh inauguration and, um, you know, the, the continuous flow of democracy, which has been kind of stifled if you look at other countries within the Western African bloc, Cote d'Ivoire has its issues, um, a few other countries, Mali too has its issues with military, and uh, we would like to welcome Nigeria to this dispensation. Now, that said, um, it's critical to look at, you know, there's a transfer of um, power. And though it has been the same party in the situation, I do not necessarily think it will be the same perspective. The commander-in-chief was different. Um, his own direction and purpose or whatever he wants to do will be, will be totally different from what already existed. Um, I heard you earlier when while you were making mention of you know some things that were going to happen, and at this point I need to say this. Um, I don't think it was booby traps from the previous government which is forcing the, the hand of this new government. I think it's us dilly dallying about necessary decisions which we should have taken a long time ago. Absolutely. Okay, I think um, Kunle's network is a bit hanging. I think he was going in the direction of the fuel subsidy. Yes, yeah. because people have all I'm argued. Sure. Kunle, are you back? We lost you for a second there. Yeah. Okay, we I'm lost here. you for a second. So you said you don't think it was, um, what's it called? You think it's a decision that had to be taken. Go ahead. For, you can pick it up from there. Okay, so as I was saying, I think that presently, um, when we look at it as regards the debt, I think it moved if you can hear us, maybe you should just leave the meeting then come back. Um, but, but where he's going with the conversation, I really want to hear his yeah. analysis on mm -hmm. how they intend to manage this debt. Because it's a huge debt burden on our neck as a country. Like, I mean, I saw a, a creative that they had done with um, the previous government, right? Um, there was um, Yara Dua, there was Obasanjo, there was Jonathan and Buhari Omo. The debts, you know, for for President Buhari is way, 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 yeah. you know, way huge, you know, compared to the previous administrations, right? So, I mean, I, two things that I'm, I, I am looking at, right? This is the first time, first of all, like Norma rightly said in our What's in the News, that we're having a government that, um, sorry, a, a president that was never in the military. He's always been in the space and yes. he's done... Yeah. You know different things in terms of okay he was governor he was a lawmaker in the lawmaker and all of that so um maybe in terms of experience and understanding of the structure mm -hmm. he might just you know then again he's a businessman he's someone that has done different things you know he understands how to bring in the investors especially with what he did with lagos state another thing that people are not paying attention to with this government is his wife I mean, all the first ladies, they've never been, like, like actively involved yeah. in politics. She, you know, she has she been a long-time serving Absolutely. senator. Yeah. You know, she's lived, you know, shows, I mean, so even outside of just the fact that, okay, there's a president, mm. he, there's a wife that also is a bit, you know, and she said, when, when I was listening to her speech, she said, oh, she's a silent worker. In fairness, it's true, right? So, I mean, again, with all of these scorecards, I will call them, we have high expectations mm. that this will not be another business as, business usual, as yeah. usual for Nigeria. We are hoping. Because, again, two things that, that stood out for me when the president was talking, he talked about um, compassion. Mm. And he, talked, he said no prejudice. He's going to lead by compassion. And he also said govern. Because you are very used to leaders using the word rule. Right? So this was the first time... I would hear someone say govern, um, govern, right? So, which is good because, again, I've always said it that this is not a uh, what's go. Uh, and he said something around seeking people's opinion, not just being a dictator to say, okay, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But you see, Uti has always argued that our democracy is a bit flawed, right? That we really do not need 
um, clear, just clear cut democracy. We need something in between democracy and autocracy. Yeah, yeah. You know, so whatever it is that we're doing as a government, we must just really say, you know what, we have to. Do we this. have to suffer. Let us just suffer yeah. and suffer once yeah. and for all. Yeah. And I think that was where Kunle was going. But I don't know if Kunle is back now. Mm. 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 Okay. Uh, okay, so let me hear your thoughts, um, Jela. Okay, so I was going through his um, inaugural speech, and one of the things that I like that he mentioned, I mean, he, 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 he was quick to touch on the humane angle of it, which is, okay, interest rates, which is also the monetary policy, you know, in you terms know, of this you know, trying to quickly, you know, trying to quickly address these issues because this goes to the very core of everyday living for people. Mm. You know, you want small businesses to try. You, you want to buy a radio, you say dollar price has gone up. Exactly. That's why you're going higher. I mean, and it makes sense. The truth is, these are simple things that the people on the streets can understand. They don't understand your inflation. They, they, it doesn't concern them. So, but when you speak directly to what really concerns them it's quick for them to say oh okay he understands what we're going through okay maybe just maybe we would find some form of resolution he has said quite um, clearly that his administration would um you know the the monetary policy that um MFLA, you know the change of currency and all that that well, they're still going ahead and both are legal tenders for now, you know, and um, that while the policy quietly it, it, and, exactly while the policy in itself is good, like we all said, mm -hmm. the implementation, implementation of it, you legal. know. So I mean, these for me are things that, and, and then of course. He talked about um, representation of women and youths in, in the okay. government. I mean, I think he was very, very clear. direct and clear okay. about that. We have Kule like yeah. back. Kule, so. sorry, we, we were losing you. You were in and out. Are you back now with us? Yeah, good day. Um, it's great to be back. I think um, the network is a little stable now. Yeah, go ahead. So you were talking about um, the debt crisis that you, we are facing in Nigeria. So looking at Nigeria's um, debt ratio, um, we must critically say that most of um, the forex leaving the country has to do with um, subsidizing, uh, subsidizing fuel at um, petroleum products or KMS. And um, we, so we make food, but we spend more um, subsidizing to bring in um, fuel. So taking out subsidy will mean that we have a little bit more of the, the fistful of dollars to play with. Now, would that be put into servicing debt, or would that be put into? It could be slipping to 50 50 because you're looking at approximately 1 trillion naira, which is, um, I think it would take um, about close to about 100, no, not 200, about 40, 60 or 70 billion dollars. And when you look at that, you can now divide it into necessary how some things, how the way some things go. And you can now say, okay, you know what? Let's put this into education, let's put this into health, and then we'll keep the rest into servicing debt. But now this will be left to the government deciding to make, make use of what it already has existing to take such actions. Yes, will this be painful to Nigerians? Yes, it will. Uh, will we be dodging a bullet in the future? Yes, we will be dodging a bullet in the future. Um, coming from a new government, I think um, if it starts on this note, it means that it's full, fully focused or revitalizing the Nigerian economy. But let's, let's, not, um, let's not jump too fast. Let's just uh, hope that the steps taken necessarily are for the betterment of Nigeria, which I think they are. OK, so Noma. All right, so well, what you've said, I mean, um, I would want to ask, um, in, your, in your expert opinion, what um, will this administration be able to achieve? There's there's a lot that is on. Um, how how do I put it? There's 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 a lot of black bad blood, so to speak, currently, both uh, with the citizens. I mean, there are a lot of people that are unhappy, and uh, beginning an administration in that kind of of tense uh, uh, environment is 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 um, is uh, an uphill task, so to speak. So, in your expert opinion, what would you? What are the things 
that this administration would need to pay attention to, apart from the subsidy, um, um, uh, dealing with that. But what are some of the concerns that they might need to quickly also uh, uh, pay attention to with respect to the Nigerian citizens and the mindset of failed promises by politicians? Um, what can they do differently as well to salvage the current mindset of Nigerians? Well, I, 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 wish, I wish I could wear the crown of the expert opinion you're giving me, Norma. But I'll attempt from my, from my direct thought process of how maybe I think the country should be run and try to attempt this. So I think, uh, first and foremost, for this government, um, I think a national unity directive should be given. Nigeria is at its most divisive as it has ever been, preceding um, or since um, 1966. Um, we have on ethnic lines, religious lines, uh, campaigns show those kind of um, thought processes embedded deeply even within the future of Nigeria. Funny, we used to think it was just a thing of older people. Mm, I think that's the first thing, first job this, uh, this um, government has to do. It also has to take a very strong stand on, I think, agitations within the country. And by strong stand, I don't mean um, a brute force approach. What I'm looking at is, first, um, some people should be called to the table and negotiate. Nigeria is one, and keeping it one is, is the task of any president or any government. Um, we should also make very clear that treason, tre tre any treasonable offence is not intolerable. I think Nigerians, like the government, have become quite lawless in the approach of, of doing things. We, 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 we go especially on that, that in different places and even in fora abroad. I think this country is the only country where you have people discussing matters abroad and the first thing they do is throw the land of the green, white, green under the bus. I, I think that um, this is something critical uh, to the development of people in this country. If you blow the psyche of being in Nigeria, then what are you building a country for? So I think we need to build that psyche and we need to um, respond to all these agitations and then also the key to providing the uh, provision and the security. I think security, if we balance security, is the foundation on which infrastructure which has been developed by the past government, the past government really focused on infrastructure, will be very, very key and would be seen. Okay, you know what, let's go on a very short break, right? Because um, I know that the vice president, uh, according to, I mean, what he said during the campaign, his strongest uh, um, boosting point was the fact that he had the solution to insecurity in this country. So. We'll go on a break. When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the Tinubu and Shatima era. We're asking what do you think the challenges would be and what are the expectations we should have from this new administration and we have with us Kunle Lawal. Now please let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to rate one a zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Way Show Africa one with hashtag Way Show. Uh, this is interesting because when Norma is talking about division, trust me, like the mood in the country um, is not like the mood when President uh, Muhammadu Buhari was being sworn in in twenty fifteen because in 2015, it seemed like the will of the people, right? The, like everybody, there was so much joy in the air. It was only our parents that said, you people have entered one chance, but, you know, as I then, <laughs> we, we could care less, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, the mood in the air this time around was a lot different, you know. Everybody's a lot more quieter. Everybody's reminiscing. And I think, again, in fairness, I like the spirit that Nigerians are not expecting too much because, again, I don't want you to be, um, what's the word now? It's when you say, when, yeah, when, again, so I was just even going to ask Kunle that when, when, when I hear people say big statements like, I will not disappoint you, that statement is very, 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 very vague as far as I'm concerned because sometimes what I have in my mind, you know, you are actually just validating 
oh, I'm not even disappointed because I expected this, right? So when I hear statements like being, uh, oh, I will not disappoint you or whatever, shouldn't we start to get better communication with our leaders? Like, don't tell us vague statements. Like, be very clear and be very specific. Because again, clarity helps to define a lot of things. It shapes a lot of things. So how can we get our leaders to start talking more assertive? This is what we're doing. You know, instead of saying, oh, we will, we will not disappoint you. Who told you? You know, because disappointment is relative, right? But let me come to you, Kunle. I hear your, your network is back now. Sorry, this is our Abuja network. <laughs> Kunle, are you there? As I'm there, I think I'll function a bit without video just to ensure okay, go that ahead. Yeah. stable. So did you hear okay, the... So no, I did hear the guy. I didn't catch the question. No, I was just going to ask that, you know, most times when you hear our um, newly sworn in leaders, they come out and say, oh, I will not disappoint you and all of that. Should, shouldn't we stop those rhetorics and start to demand for more assertive or clear uh, set um, goals and do, just be very, very definitive in terms of what you're saying? Don't, don't tell me you will not disappoint me because disappointment is actually very relative. Uh, for me, uh, first and foremost, the person asking not to be disappointed doesn't even know the functions of the executive. Mm. And therein lies the problem. So, are we going to really go into this and pick one side, or we're going to deal with this from both sides? Mm. So, the general functions of the executive, of course, lie with enforcement of laws, uh, appointment making, security, uh, what else? Um, um, legislative functions, they have the ability to make um, executive orders. Um, we the citizens haven't really fully understood that. So our disappointment most of the time, if you look at Nigerians, is that uh, the largest didn't reach me. Once uh, the largest reaches you, oh, come on, the government is fine, regardless of what's happening to anybody else. So are we going to have a collective response to what we're going to demand for account the demand for while demanding accountability or are we going to have the usual nigerian personal response to once the government and if, if permitted to use this language if government pay me it's okay everybody else we enter one chance and, and 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 that's that's one of the problems with with holding uh government accountable in nigeria um for me i think if we follow the exact parameters of holding this government accountable i've always said you cannot engage a system which you do not understand. And, and therein lies the biggest problem in Nigeria. So you find uh, Nigerians trying to hold a legislator accountable for not uh, uh, putting okay. down roads or building schools. That's not his job. It's totally not his function. Constitution, constituency projects are not even constitutional. So what are you talking about? And then you, know, you now want the president to do alpha and omega things which are totally out of his jurisdiction. Well, the president can do it like in the last dispensation because guess what? Nobody reads the constitution or nobody cares if the president breaks the rules of separation of powers. And, and that for me, that, that is where I find the problem with Nigeria. So we need to first understand what exactly needs to be done, then engage and ask for what needs to be done. The, the fault has, 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 has been held in one. We pointed fingers so much the, the politicians, the politicians, the politicians, the politicians. They are, they are from us. So we need to stop mortgaging our responsibilities as citizens and actually act as we are supposed to act. Then we can get the desired results. So it's, it's not a government is only responsible. For a democracy to work, the government and the people have to be responsible. And that's the birth of a real democracy. <sighs> Hmm. This is interesting. Okay. <laughs> you want to come in? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I 100% agree with what um, Onlea has said. Like I always say, I mean, um, the, the, the leadership is always um, sometimes, you know, a mirror of the followership. If we relegate our duties as followers, you know, and um, we don't do what we ought to do, we don't know what we need to know, then invariably we're setting up the leadership to fail. It's just as simple as that. But if you know, we, we are invested in this change, if we're invested in this notion that Nigeria needs to work, then everybody, everybody has a 
you know, there are responsibilities. Everybody needs to come to the table and say, oh, okay, I know that I need to do this. I know if I'm going to say that, okay, I don't expect corruption from my leaders, then at the very, you know, lowest level, I shouldn't be corrupt. Mm. It, it's as simple as that. But again, Nigerians are used to, we, ex, we have a certain standard for people at the top. And then we just feel that, well, at our level, we're okay, it's expected, we can do anything that we like, and nobody can question us. But that has to stop. It has Absolutely. to. Norma, you want to come in? Yeah, I agree with uh, Diola. But I, but I also want to take it from the angle of the leadership itself, because leadership is a reflection of the people. And um, if the people are not confident in the leaders that they have raised, then it's because things have changed. Maybe the people are beginning to change. They're beginning to see a different uh, perception or have a different view or opinion or perception towards what a leader should be. So I believe that the leadership has a very key role to play in guiding the people because the leadership is what the entire world will see. And um, when we get things right at the level of leadership, it can also trickle down to the members. When we begin to do things by example, so it's not just, uh, even though it's important, very critically important for the Nigerian citizens to begin to hold our leaders accountable, the leaders themselves should also be able to hold themselves accountable. It's not just about giving promises or, you know, putting out promises there uh, that, are, or, uh, that continue to be on met expectations of the citizens. We need to rise beyond the point where we just have people that claim to have the solution to the problems and only compound the situation. And this is where I believe the, the new government, the new administration would have to really go and look inwards as to what we can critically begin to do to show the Nigerian citizens that we have them uh, 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 we have them as top priority and we are accountable. So it's not just about promises. It's about action that Nigerians can see and they too can begin to hold themselves accountable, not just their leaders, but themselves accountable as Nigerian citizens. Kule, mm. so if you had one thing to say to Nigerians um, as we look ahead into this new um, dispensation, this new era, right? Um, I hear some appointments have been made, even though I want to suggest that they should go and look for Utielu and appoint, <laughs> appoint as their communication strategist because, um, again, uh, one of the things that kills most governments is the lack mm -hmm. of communication or ineffective communication or very, very poor communication. Um, even though you have very fantastic um, things that you're doing, if you do not communicate it right, you lose, you know, you, you, you actually, it's almost like you're not doing anything. So if you had one thing to say, what would that be to the new um, dispensation, to the new era? What, what would be your, your, your um, counsel to them? Well, um, I think it will be what I have pushed for the most, which is um, build a love for country. Um, the most uh, marginalized tribe in Nigeria is being Nigeria. We have multiple tribes. Everybody wants to be Yoruba, Efik, Tib, um, Hausa, Fulani. But the most marginalized tribe in Nigeria is being Nigeria. And everybody else is dead, fights with you being Nigeria. So I think we need to build up a Nigerian ideology and create a Nigeria and have the Nigerian tribe that rises above everything, federal character, um, rotational presidency, and um, all of that issues which, which we deal with. I feel building up the real Nigeria will be, is key to the development of the most populous black nation in the world. All right, thank you. Noma, we have a message. While um, you're trying to get out that message, I was going to talk about this decentralizing of power Kunle, just uh, maybe a, a word or two on that. But Noma, you have a message, and um, Kunle will come back. All right, so this message... 
Yeah, this message is from Daniel Elo, and he says, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag Grace. The Tinubu and Shatima era. Challenges and expectations. We thank God for another book and chapter that has opened in Nigeria. The challenges may have in this administration or the challenges this administration may have is that it may take time for things to change. The expectations is that this administration must be better than the last one. I hope this administration will not be an easier said than done time. We wear the shoe and know where it pinches. If this administration is not ready to deliver, then they have no business being in office. The past eight years has been a waste and this present government must not be a waste. Thank you, Daniel. He's our regular fan. <laughs> All right, um, so Kunle. Okay, yeah, um, I, I feel that we over discuss over flow this decentralization. And okay. if you go to Nigerian constitution, to be decided, the powers are already decentralized. If a, if a state governor decides to kidnap a local government at, at will, because they didn't use the word autonomy in the constitution while providing it the same uh, executive functions as the state governor. For me, that is the citizen's choice. And that is also us tolerating it from the governor. Um, things that have been decentralized already, which we do not concentrate about, are uh, like, let's say, state electoral commissions. I can't remember when last a state governor allowed you know, an opposing party win a local government chairman seat. And you're talking about decentralization. Okay, well, we can as well decentralize the police so that nobody can talk against an emperor of the state. So the truth is that the real question is, are we ready for the decentralization we're talking about or the decentralization the constitution provides? I don't think we are, especially with the emperors of state, which we've sworn in about 28 new ones again playing out in my head because i believe that we're at a crossroad um especially with the like norma rightly said the agitations that you know that you know summed up up until today um so it's almost like you know what i want i want them to prove a lot of nigerians wrong right because a lot of nigerians are believing that oh especially the young people they believe that oh um the, first of all the coming into power there were just too many um, what's it called abnormalities that happened around the elections and all of that so i mean if they say you know what i would prove to you people that i was the right leader for the job i was the right best man for the job that's fine that's good because again we are tired in this country of playing small i've said it several times and i'll say it again the kind of capacity that nigeria has you know there are some things that we have no business mm -hmm. with um, how do we start to how do we start to improve on our economy in a way that we are the ones exporting and earning forex? You know, instead of just depending on imports only, right? Um, how do we do? Uh, what's it called? How do we also harness the resources, the natural resources that we have? I mean, the amount of bitumen deposit, for instance, in Nigeria. The amount of bitumen deposit in Nigeria. We have no business having one single pothole. On the roads we have no business with potholes with the amount of bitumen that we have as reserve that has not been tapped it has not even been touched right mm -hmm. so just imagine if we had a government that say you know what we have a plan we have a blueprint and this is where we're going and we actually start to see and this is not just whitewash kind of structure where somebody comes and do the same project that yeah. the previous administration did you know Look at a lot of our roads. Out the, the, a, one rain and everything is just gone into the drains, right? Let's be really deliberate about fixing our countries. And I think Nigeria is not even asking for too much. Nigerians are not asking for too much. Let's sort out the power and let's sort out the, the infrastructure and security, right? Once those things are sorted, we can take care of ourselves as a people. Mm -hmm. You know, your final parting comments to the new era. What do you think? What do you want to tell them? Well, I'm hopeful and... Um, I'm wishing them uh, the very best. Um, I'm hoping that um, they do their very best. I'm hoping that um, they put round pegs in round holes and it's not business as usual. It's not political. I mean, it's where in, like you said, the cross, we're at a crossroad and this is not time for politicking. Yes, politicking is part of governance, but at the same time, I mean, right them. now, politicking has got to take back stage. You have to focus on I governance. Mean, you have to focus on governance. You have to put 
people who truly you know um who truly understand the vision as the as the president you know people who understand the vision of of um, the nigeria that's you think we can we can be and people who are ready to work with you i mean no sentiments and um let's just let's just get the work. best men on the job yeah, number exactly. if you had a final thing to say what would that be well like Dola said i wish them the best and like um Kunle said think nigeria so for me it's just uh think nigeria in in your policies and whatever decisions that you're making think about the nigerian citizens build nigeria look for the opportunities to help to 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 push nigeria forward to where she is supposed to be and uh, be nigeria we're all nigerians and there's so much resource in this country i think that um if we really really like napoleon hill will say whatever the mind can conceive the mind can achieve it so if the new administration conceives the idea of a new nigeria i believe that they have the capacity or they will have the capacity to achieve it absolutely i think on that note but thank you so much Kunle Lawal. thank you noma and thank you diola we had thank a fantastic you. conversation truly want to say congratulations again to nigeria um there was a peaceful transitioning we didn't have any rank or whatever but um we also want to wish the new administration um success we really hope for a better economy honestly speaking some things are promising and we hope they are able to achieve it now before we go follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa, you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Every success story is a tale of constant adaption, revision, and change. You have to keep on, you know, reviewing and all of that. We're hoping that with this new era will come renewed hope as they promised mm -hmm. in the in their campaigns. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.